In this video, I want to continue the proof focus I started in the first week. I want to focus on proving the properties of the dot product. I think I said in an earlier video that this would be left to the activities, but I'm going to do some of it here in the videos. I'll start with commutativity. In the dot product video, I just declared that the dot product was commutative. That's not enough for mathematics. I, if I want to use it, I'm, I'm going to need to prove it. So let me go through the proof. My goal is the statement u dot v equals v dot u. It's often very helpful to write the goal at the start, but being careful that I'm not using that equation. The goal should only show up again at the end. To reach the goal, I'll start at one side of the equation and work towards the other. I'll start at the left with u dot v. As I've done frequently now, I'll expand the vector in components. I want dot products to work in any Rn, so I'll write the vector with n components and I'll do the proof such that this will work whether n is 2, 3, 4, or any higher number. Then I use the definition of the dot product and write the sum that defines it. Now I'm trying to reverse this dot product. In this sum, all the multiplications are multiplications of real numbers. They can happen in either order. Ordinary multiplication is commutative. Therefore, I flip all the multiplications. But then, by definition, this is just the dot product in the other order. So I can go back to components and then back to the original vectors, and I end up with v dot u, which completes the proof. This is a rigorous argument that starts on one side, uses valid reasoning and definitions, and ends up on the other side. Let me do another. One of the properties of the dot product is that the dot product of a vector with itself is the same as its length squared. Why is this true? Again, I start on the left. I expand in components and use the definition of the dot product to write the multiplication and additions of the components. Then I notice that each multiplication is a multiplication of a number with itself, so I can write these as squares. The next step is a tricky one. I want a square root of squares, as in length. But since this is a positive number, I can write it as the square of its square root. Why would I do such a thing? It's just more complicated. Well, yeah, it is, but it is valid. All positive numbers are equal to the square of their square root. And once I do this, I see exactly the result I want. The square root of the sums is the square of the squares is the definition of length, and the expression is therefore length squared, and I've ended up with a desired result. Notice in these proofs how I rely on definitions. When I need to know about the length or the dot product, I often go back to the definitions and use them explicitly. You should expect to do this in your proofs. Definitions are very valuable and useful. 